This is the second part of World War I notes for World History II. We're talking about fighting the war. So we saw how the war began through our timeline of from the spark, the assassination of the Archduke, through Russia and um, everybody mobilizing in Germany invading Belgium, and then France and Great Britain declare war on everybody, and the war has begun. Now most of the fighting is going to take place on this Western Front. Okay, so the Western Front is this yellow dotted line between France and Germany. So a lot of the fighting that we're going to be talking about is between France and Germany. Now when the war begins, Germany has a plan to avoid war on two fronts, and we call this the Schleifen Plan. The first part of the plan is to concentrate troops in the West and defeat France very quickly. So down here at number one, they're going to focus on invading France. They're going to run through Belgium and get to Paris, which is up here in France above the sea. And then uh, once they've defeated France, then they rush troops over to the two over here in Russia and fight Russia. Now the thought is that France is going to be mobilizing much faster than Russia because Russia is kind of still a backward nation at this time period. And so they can defeat France by the time that Russia mobilizes, then they'll still be able to defeat Russia over on the far side. So they think this is going to be a very quick war. So in the start, the Germans attack France starting the Schleffen Plan. And they almost reach Paris. You can see on the map here this Paris. And this line is how far they get, this yellow line going through Belgium. However, the Allies, the British and the French, are going to regroup and counterattack the Germans and push them back to this green line, okay, still in French territory, but not quite as close to Paris as it had been. And this destroys the Schleifen plan. And from here, we're going to see trench warfare develop, and the troops are going to basically sit in trenches and fight between trenches for three years. Okay, we're going to have battles at Apes, up here, we're going to have a Battle of the Somme down here. We're going to have battles at Reims and Verdun, all of the places like that, until the Americans eventually arrive. So the Schleifen Plan is destroyed and trench warfare develops. Now, trench warfare is where you dig trenches on either side of the battlefield. You fight between the trenches over yards rather than miles. It used to be that you would fight and the, um, the army would win and they could move a couple miles and gain territory. It's not happening in trench warfare, and it's a really miserable life. So this picture shows one side of the trenches. So let's say the British side of the trenches and over here, and then the German side would be on the other side of no man's land. Okay, no man's land has barbed wire and landmines and things like that in it. The frontline trench is up here, and then there are communications trenches running back to the support trenches and the reserve trenches all the way back um, until artillery cannot hit. So the how you fight a battle with trench warfare is your artillery starts and you bomb the other side with your big guns like cannons, the new kinds of cannons, and you hope that your bombs are going to kill the majority of the troops on the other side. And then you stop the artillery and your soldiers crawl out of the trenches and it's called going over the top. And when they crawl out of the trenches then they cross no man's land and they try and take and attack the trench on the other side and kill everybody else who is in it hoping that you can then gain that trench and push people back even further, which means new trenches are developed. Now, trenches are developed because of our new weapons, like machine guns, where it used to be that you had an army facing another army, and they both had the same rifles, and whoever you know shot the most and killed the most amount of people was the winner, and whoever lost the most amount of people was the loser. Now, with machine guns, we can't fight like that anymore because machine guns can just mow down the other side and ki basically kill everybody. And so trench warfare develops from that. Um, here's an aerial view of the trenches, like from the sky. So let's say this is the German side over here, the frontline Germans. Then we have no man's land in the middle, and then this would be like the British and French trench over here. So on your notes, um, it says to write a description for the collection of images that you see. This is the first slide for number one, trenches. So take a second and write, uh, stop the video, and write a description of what you see in the trenches. This is going to be um, still part of the same trenches. What do you notice about the trenches? Are they crowded? Are they open? Okay, you can see people sleeping here. Maybe someone has died after a battle. He's up on guard duty, sentry duty. He's working as a sniper. Okay, they're not always straight lines in the trenches. Notice how deep they are. Notice how they've carved spots out. They've reinforced the sides. 
Okay, so this is not a straight trench, so that way if the enemy comes over to one side, they can't just shoot down the trench and kill everybody in it. They have to actually move through the trench. For number two, life in the trenches. Okay, what do you notice about life in the trenches? Okay, what are these guys doing? This guy's reading a newspaper. This guy's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. He's reading. This guy might be writing a letter. Okay, they would have a lot of downtime in the trenches. They would catch rats, which were a big problem in the trenches. Sometimes the rats became dinner. Sometimes they would just name the rats, and that would become the mascot for their dugout. They would dig out areas of the trench and reinforce the top, so that way when the artillery is bombing, they're not going to get hit. This is still life in the trenches. When it rains, you're going to have trenches flooding. And this nasty picture shows trench foot, which is what happens when, you're, when your feet stay wet for an extended period of time, like a week or two. Um, your skin essentially dies, and you get bacterial infections, and it ends up looking like this. And normally, the only way to solve this is amputation. If you download the PowerPoint and click on the YouTube link, the picture, um, it'll take you to a video about the first Christmas and how they end up having an armistice where they stop the war for the night. And they end up, um, the Germans and the British both climb out of the trenches and meet in no man's land and um, celebrate Christmas together. And then the next day they go back into the trenches and they start fighting again. For number three, trench warfare and the new weapons. We have new weapons like uh, machine guns here. These guys are wearing gas masks because of poison gas. You can see the bombs exploding over here. This is where the soldiers are going up and over the top. We're also going to have new weapons like tanks. This is the first war where we see tanks. We're going to have new weapons like submarines. This is the first time we see submarines actually engaged in warfare. We had developed submarines previously. There was one in the Civil War. Um, but they had never really been used for warfare. We also start to see airplanes used in warfare. For World War I, they're normally used for reconnaissance or intelligence gathering to see where the enemy troops are. Um, but eventually they figure out how to put bombs in the airplanes and drop bombs on other areas. And then lastly, I would like you to look at the effect of the trenches on areas. This used to be a forest, and then it became no man's land between two trenches. Okay, you can see what happened to the forest from all of the bombs. Think about pretty, f pretty farmland where it's all flat and you can plow it easily. Well, this is what farmland looks like after it had been no man's land or after it had been bombed. This is in France today. In France today. Not working out well. The trenches are still there in France, a lot of them. Okay, so you can go walk through them and see what the dugouts look like. And then in class, what we did was we paused for a minute with notes, and we looked at the Battle of the Somme, one of the most famous battles um, in 1916 between the British and the Germans and how the British are able to um, eventually, over a couple months, push back the German defenses towards this dotted line and um, are able to use the railroad tracks and fight in the style. However, there are about a million people who are casualties, dead and wounded, from this battle. So that's on the Western Front. On the Eastern Front, the Germans and the Austrians are fighting the Russians and the Serbs. Okay, so we're talking about the front that is over between Germany and Russia and Austria, this line over here. It's a very indecisive war. It's a very mobile war. They're not fighting in trenches over here. Um, there's, it's very similar to how it used to be with lots of movement between areas. Um, you can see all of, the area, all of the arrows and how much movement there was. However, Russia starts running out of supplies, and eventually they're going to end up dropping out of the war in 1917 because of the communist revolution that happens, where they overthrow the Tsar and kill him and his family, um, and the Bolsheviks take over. And we'll talk, back, talk about this in our next unit um, with the interwar period. If you have a minute, um, take a second to go to um, a World War I overview this YouTube video, it will show um, on the map how much movement there was between the Eastern Front and the Western Front, and also the fighting that happened down in the Ottoman Empire and Turkey in the Middle East. And then this trench warfare link is an actual game. Um, see if you can survive fighting trench warfare um, and learn about daily life. I played it three times and died every single time, so see if you can beat me. And then lastly, 
Um, I just want to show you kind of what's happened so far in the war. France, uh, France Ferdinand has been assassinated. We have a couple of battles and um, over on the Western Front. We have um, a sea battle at Jutland. Um, Italy finally comes in on the side of the Germans and Germany begins unrestricted submarine warfare, which will lead to the U.S. declaring war on Germany, which will be the next notes video. However, it's not as clean and pretty as this. It looks more like this. Okay, so we have the Western, things happening on the Western Front and things happening on the Eastern Front and in the Middle East and Africa. Um, Japan and China are also getting involved in the war. And so you can see how from Germany they push all the way into France and they win a battle and then the French push them back. Um, it's kind of a cool timeline like that and what's happening at sea as well. That is the end of um, this section of notes. We'll be back for another one in a minute.